continuous. So that is exhaust region. So in fact, this word exhaust stands for X-ray extended X-ray absorption fine structure. Nowadays, in fact, uh, instead of calling it as exhaust, they have dropped E word. It is generalized as XAF, XAFS. So exhaust was that extended period which is continuous and exhaust XAFS comprises the pre-edge, the zens, the X-ray near edge structure as well as exhaust. So XAFS, X-ray absorption fine structure comprises three part now. I am sure uh, Professor Nyan Aga, like in his lectures, you have, uh, he has already explained you what is near edge, what is zens, what is exhaust, and how it takes place. As you can see, that the electron from the K shell is ejected out, and which goes through the continuum and through the energy from X rays. And that vacancy is filled by electron from the L shell. So that is defined as K alpha. And if it is filled by M shell electron, it is nomenclatured as K beta. Again, here you can see uh, we have plotted the mass absorption coefficient versus the energy of the X-ray wavelength. So the curve is not linear, but it, the, it has certain uh, discontinuities uh, after certain gap. So those uh, discontinuities where the curve is going straight, then coming down, coming down, these are the absorption edges. So as I was telling about the <coughs> mu value, i is equal to i0 e to the power minus mu t. So in last five days, you have, might have heard this all the time. So I0 is the intensity before it enters the material, T is the thickness of the material, and I is the intensity after it transmitted through the material. So that is uh, the Lambert law. This is uh, X-ray absorption measurement uh, mechanism is very simple as you can see there is a x-ray source then the monochromator and then the incident x-rays are identified as i0 and through the sample uh, x-rays can be transmitted in two manners one is the transmitted beam that is recorded as i and there is another the fluorescence beam which is reflected from the sample so that is identified as i phi I f and I is again I 0 e to the power minus mu t and mu can be written as log of I upon I 0 and fluorescence is the refilling of the deep core hole uh, and it is measured as I f upon I 0 versus mu. So this uh, the why the exhaust takes space, why we get the structure as you all know that the ejected electron gives out the photoelectrons and the vibration of those photoelectrons gives the structure of exhaust. So that photoelectron is identified as wave number k and that k value is under root 2 of m of e minus e0 upon h cross square. So, and if the very well known equation of the exhaust is chi k is equal to chi k which depends on the energy. So, if we plot the k, the wave number versus the chi k value, k square, normally uh, we plot chi k versus k. But uh, the pro plot is like this, but normally instead of taking the k versus chi, we take 
k versus chi cube. So, the curve is like this, you can see the second curve. Um, and the theory already you have studied about the x rays. how the photoelectron scattering takes place. Here you can see the zens, the exhausts, the extended x-ray absorption. Yes, this is the important equation. All x-ray absorption is fixed with this equation, chi k is equal to uh, summation over j and j you can see the equation. So, there are two parts in this equation you can see. The first part uh, is related to n which is coordination number of neighboring atom and the second part is related to r which is the distance of neighboring atom and sigma is defined as a mean square disorder of neighboring distance. So, we are talking about the exhaust exhaust for last 5 days and what is the conclusion why we take the exhaust. Exhaust gives us two things, one is the nearest neighbor distance and the second thing is about the coordination number. These two are very valuable information which we get from the exhaust and from this equation solving this equation. Uh, I just wanted to do this e solving this equation uh, if possible in the lab, and we will see if possible. And so, these two information we get from exhaust and this is all of you know is non destructive testing. And the material which is required for exhaust spectroscopy is very, very less, even less than 1 milligram is sufficient for recording the exhaust. Yeah, this is again this solution of this equation. This is the relationship between the scattering amplitude and the phase shift. I am sure you have studied it in the lectures of Professor Miyanaga. I am just repeating the exhaust part just for, uh, yes, these are the important features associated with the x-ray absorption experimental design. When we have used the exhaust in our lab here, so we have used the band crystal spectrograph. Uh, and the traditional x-ray x-ray units which gives out the intensity of very low category and photographic film for recording the data as I said. Nowadays, you can see the monochromators detectors and the well aligned beams are used. One thing is very important about the exhaust that the sample should be homogeneous and this is how we prepare the homogeneous sample. Otherwise, the intensity varies and the thickness varies a lot and that shows the exhaust structure itself if the sample is not homogeneous. Uh, this is just an idea that pre is defined from minus 200 electron volt to minus 20 and Zens is from minus 20 to 30 and exhaust is from 30 electron volt to 800 electron volt. And when we record the exhaust data, the steps which we take for detecting, the detector is used uh, as you can see for the pre edge because edge is very prominent. So, we can take the step in 5 electron volt, but for Zens 
let us 0.5 and for exam data it is much lesser than as 0 0.05 you can see so this is the schematic diagram for exhaust measurement you can see pre edge edge the exhaust oscillations and in between is the zens region between the pre edge to edge is the exhaust region zens region I am sure all of you know about the features of nanomaterials, the properties, the characteristics, all of the nanomaterials. So, just to give an idea, we have compiled this data. If anybody wants to write down something, okay, I am not repeating and reading it. Some more. Don't worry, you will get the lecture. Some more. Yes, um, as you all know that nanomaterials can be prepared by several methods um, that is uh, you can see by severe plastic deformation, high energy ball milling, chemical precipitation very well used and known, sol gel method, thermal spray, pyro spray pyrolysis, inert gas condensation and these are some of the drawbacks of traditional uh, routes. Uh, it produces porous particles, um, sometimes chemical evaporation is the you cannot control the particle size and it may be hazardous as well. So, now, finally, we come to the uh, lasers that how the lasers can be used for mater material processing. There are several methods as you can see uh, pulse laser deposition, laser pyrolysis, laser etching, photolithography, nano structuring and nano patterning, pulse laser ablation in liquid media. So, this is what we have used pulse laser ablation in liquid media. these are some of the advantage of the laser ablation. This is the advantage for laser ablation in liquid media. Some more advantages. You can see the mechanism of laser ablation in step 1 that one is uh, that material is target is kept in the liquid media and one pulse laser is given to it. So, it forms the cluster and these clusters uh, breaks uh, in the liquid media which is very simple uh, process and this is how we get the nanoparticles. We have used ND arc laser and uh, this are just the specification of the ND arc laser. You can see the laser it is focused on the mirror and there is a convex lens through which it is focused on the target material which is put in the liquid. And, uh, you can see <coughs> the target was nickel powder for preparing the nickel nanoparticles 
energy was used 35 mj wavelength was 355 and pulse width was 3 nanosecond and liquid media was sds uh, 50 mm of sds and 25 mm of liquid was used and ablation was done for 90 minutes. So, you can see here that before laser fragmentation the part uh, target was looking like this and after that uh, when the laser part, uh, fragmentation takes place the particle becomes like this the second picture. These are the sum of the results of SDS. Uh, you can see the dark line is showing here in this picture is of SDS powder and the red line is of the uh, after the ablation. So, this is uh, you can see here for uh, UV spectrum and uh, um, F, this is FTIR, uh, FTIR and uh, you can see the peaks are nomenclature according to the position and I think we have um, this is it should have been the last, second one. The XRD has been taken and you can see that peaks are identified as 111200 and 220 and <coughs> the 2 theta values was 44, 51, 76 and using the Scherer formula uh, we have calculated this work was done by my student. So, we have calculated the size as 38 nanometer. I am interested just to show you the example of it and you can see the uh, shape of the particle was dumbbell shaped. Dumbbell if you remember some exercise we used to do in our younger age. So, that was a dumbbell we used to put it like this so the, that is known as dumbbell and you can see the middle one the B one is showing the dumbbell. So, this is our expectation that uh, uh, these are the part of it is showing 100, 111 and 110 and how it is taking place that when the it is formed. So, <coughs> the matrix is like this in the C part we have shown it is our own assumption and this is the magnetic uh, measurement of the material and it shows the uh, magnetic reminiscence versus the saturation magnetization the ratio is 0 0.5 which shows the single domain and if it is less than that it shows the multiple domain. And the same matter, uh, the nickel nanoparticles we have prepared by which are where in the spherical shape. This is a equation which controls the formation of nanoparticles. And this is the 2D uh, ex XRD measurement of the spherical shaped nanoparticles and you can see the indexing is done at 111, 200 and 220. This is FTIR spectra you can see uh, the first one is showing of the pure SDS, the second one is showing of the coated SDS coated nickel nanoparticles and different frequencies has been recorded at different places. They are normally featured like this HOH, CH stretching and all that.
these are the TEM and HRTEM images of the uh, synthesized nanoparticles, which are nomenclatured as P2. So, you can see in the histogram that particle size is uh, decreasing as uh, <coughs> the number is increasing. So, most of the particles are of the size of 8 to 10 nanometer. Again, this is the HR time images and the time images of some other concentration is 10 mm, in the other one it was 20 mm. Uh, these are the magnetic measurements, as is you can see uh, the coercivity and the reminiscence recorded for these particles. Yeah. So, here is our interest that is of exhaust studies of nickel particles, nanoparticles. You can see we have taken two samples P2 and P3 and P2 and P3 here are shown in the left figure by red and blue. P1, uh, the black one is the nickel foil which we have used for the standard and again uh, this is the, the green one is of the nickel oxide. Uh, using the multiple scattering equation FEFF program. So, that is theoretical value we have taken. The idea was just to compare the our samples with the nickel foil which is the pure nickel and nickel oxide uh, calculated values that whether the particles which we are prepared by the pulse uh, laser ablation are nickel or nickel oxide. So, you can see that it is in the both the sample are almost same position is the peak and which is nearly same to the nickel foil not to the nickel oxide. In nickel oxide you can see there is a sharp peak. Whereas, in the nickel ox, uh, foil, it is almost similar to our samples. And here in the second graph, we have plotted the photo uh, k versus chi q values and uh, again you can see, uh, we have taken uh, nickel foil, P2, P3 are our samples, then again uh, theoretical value of the nickel foil we have taken using the multiple scattering FEFF program. So, that is shown as uh, brown, the fourth one D and again we have taken for nickel oxide FEFF values and maybe it may contain the nickel hydroxide. So, we have taken the FEF value of nickel hydroxide and finally, about uh, nickel oxide of the FEFF values. So, we have compared all the data and if you see you get we get the P 2 and P 3 which is A, B and C are very close to A. So, which shows that it is pure nickel oxide and uh, nickel uh, nanoparticles. So, this data was recorded in Chiba University Japan uh, using their facility. The pre material was prepared here in our lab. This is the Fourier transform of uh, all these materials which I have just uh, shown you that P 2, P 3 are our sample nickel foil and uh, nickel oxide, then hydroxide and nickel carbonate also we have taken. 
because just to compare whether it is matching, maybe it has formed instead of nickel oxide the nickel carbonate. So you can see A is matching well with B and C. Only difference you can make out here is that the amplitude of the peak is reduced in our particle which is very high in nickel foil. Yeah, this is the result, Fourier transform for the samples. Uh, amplitude is substantially smaller in the calculated Fourier transforms. So, this is the data for nickel foil is the standard one and P2, P3 were our uh, samples which is having 10 mm and 20 mm and 10 mm SBS uh, dissolved in a, uh, for liquids. The coordination number is about 5 in this case and in the second case it comes out to be about 7 and you can see that. Uh, R value we have measured, the Debye Waller factor which gives you the phase about the material uh, position of nickel in these materials, you can find out. So, this is very useful data. So, this is what is. Uh, if you see the reference Calvin et al. of 2003 they have given the method that using the exhaust data we can calculate the size of the particle. So, we tried to calculate the size of the particle, but unfortunately whatever value we were getting is was very different from the particle size which we have measured with the HRD or TAM or HR TAM images. Yes, this is the chemical method for preparing the nickel nanoparticles for nickel oxide nanoparticles. So, this is very well known to all of you. These are some of the um, results of UV, UV visible for nickel oxides. Uh, just to show you. These are the XRD data of nickel oxide. Uh, again, it is indexed at 111200220311 and 222. And from this data, it shows that it, the structure is FCC. We have actually prepared four part, uh, samples that is nomenclature as 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you can see NIO 1, 2, 3, 4 here and the particle size using the Scherer formula was calculated as 10, 12, 20 and 23 nanometer. Uh, just to show the concentration versus crystallized size as you can see that concentration uh, crystallized size decreases as the concentration increases and reverses the uh, strain obviously versus the concentration. Uh, this is FTIR and magnetic measurement of nickel oxides nanoparticles which we prepared 1, 2, 3, 4 all 4 particles, uh, 4 samples you can see uh, result is given here as the measurement is 10, 12, 20 and 23 from HRD data. These are some of the images, same images of all the 4 samples.
in fact we are interested in exhaust only so just to show you tem and h uh, side patterns of these particles and again you can see that between 14 to 18 we have the maximum number of particles from histogram and Uh, this is PL spectra of these particles. Yeah, exhaust studies. Uh, this is very good result in the sense that if you take the calculated value of nickel oxide using FEFS, so that is shown as the black one and it is matching very well with all the four samples. You can see that the peak position is exactly at the same in uh, the first peak as well as the second peak, although the third peak is missing in our sample, but the fourth peak if you can see and the fifth peak you can see all are matching very well with the nickel oxide uh, calculated value. So, we can see that these are nickel oxide not nickel and only thing again you can see that amplitude is less in all the particles, all the samples. So, this is again uh, k versus k, psi k square k square chi k spectra and here also you can see that all the vibrations are matching very well with the calculated one. This is inverse Fourier transform and inverse also you can see the peak position is almost same. It is just comparing the results and you can see all the four peaks are at the same position and if you compare the whole spectra it is almost similar in all the regions of exhaust. This is just the conclusions. We have used the laser ablation facilities of the University of Allahabad and TAM at IIT Delhi and FTIR at BHU and as I shared that we have used the exhaust facility of Professor Fujikawa. Professor Fujikawa is a colleague of uh, Professor Miyanaga and uh, he very kindly extended the exhaust facilities at Chiba University Japan to us. Some of the publications. We have presented uh, that a top paper at diamond light source uh, in England and which was accepted in their proceedings. So, you can see that DOI number. These are some of the papers we have presented in exam 14 in Camerino, Italy in 2009. Earlier we recorded the exhaust data 
on uh, thallium based superconductors so in that case we use the facilities which exist in goa university and professor sarode was there he extended in the facility to us so we have done that work over there thanks for your attention so after the tea break i will just show all these facilities are redundant now everybody is using the synchrotron radiation so i will show you what are the synchrotron radiations available to us and what are the facilities there and what we can do in future thank you let us break for the tea